Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Since I published the Spring Security with JWT token video, which you all liked so much, which makes me also so happy, I kept getting a lot of messages and comments about how can I log out from such system or from such secure system. I also asked you to vote for the next video and the next topic, which is this one. If you didn't see it, just go ahead, follow me on LinkedIn and also you can join me on Facebook, on Discord, so you can keep getting these notifications and you can keep getting uh, this information and polling that I'm asking each time. So after asking this question, you all voted that you want to see how we can implement a logout or how we can set up a, a logout mechanism to log out from a backend which is secured based on JWT token. We all know that logging out from web application is so important for the user experience and this as well for a backend API. So in this video, I will walk you through all the necessary steps, step by step, and I will explain how we can create this logout mechanism. Before we start, just take one second. If you're new to my channel, just go ahead and subscribe. Also enable the notification so you can get notified each time I publish a new video. And also don't forget to hit the like button so I can keep continue on recording videos like this for you guys. So this is will show a lot of motivation and will show me that you like my content. So this is going to motivate me to produce more and more content like this for you guys. Thanks again, and now let's start the implementation. So before we start any implementation or diving into the code, let's first answer this simple question. Does Spring provide any default implementation or any built-in implementation for logging out when we have a JWT system to secure our backend? And the answer is when using Spring security with JWT token, there is no built-in implementation for the logout as the stateless nature of the JWT tokens means that the server does not store or keep any track of the user's session. And this is the main thing why we don't have a built-in or a default implementation for logging out. So this means that the client is responsible of managing the tokens and initializing the logout process. So when we talk about front ends, for example, the user can just remove the token from the local storage or set the, or change or set an expiration date for that token so the token gets expired. Or we can also implement uh, a custom mechanism on the backend side to secure or to invalidate and revoke these tokens. So what Spring provides for us in order to simplify and make our life easier is like we have some logout handlers and also some logout success handlers. So when we want to perform a logout operation, all we need to do is to provide an endpoint and then Spring will provide us with a logout handler and there we can implement our logic on how we want to invalidate or to log out or to, um, let's say, remove or invalidate the, that token. Let's not complicate the words and let not, let's not also use um, so much complicated technical words. You all remember this diagram that I have right here that explains how the security flow works or how we can secure our API using JWT token. So now we need to add or we need to adapt a little bit uh, on this level. So in order to be able to implement our logout system. So first of all, let me talk to you or let me explain the idea how we will be implementing this mechanism. So first of all, we need to store our tokens or the generated tokens for each user and each time the user tries to uh, to log in or tries to access a secured uh, resources we need to do double checking so the first one we need to validate the token the classic way we know using the JWT service and check that the token belong belongs to the correct user the user exists and so and so forth 
And the second check, we need to go and fetch the JWT token and make sure that that one, first of all, exists. And the second thing, this token needs to be valid and not revoked and not expired. So here we have our authentication filter, which is right here, which is the entry point or the first filter that we will be execute. Not the first filter of the whole application, but our first filter that we will be executing once we get the request. So before it was only delegating or uh, checking the token using this JWT service, which checks that uh, if the token is not expired, the user exists and so on and so forth. And then now we will be adding another level or another layer, or let's call it even another step. So also checking the JWT service and also we need to fetch the token repository or we need to fetch the token where we stored it in our storage system and make sure that this token is not expired and also is not revoked because we need to revoke it or set it as expired once the user implements or um, clicks on logout or perform a logout operation. So once we get the execution or the result of these two, then we will pass them to the calculation and based of the result. So here it's a Boolean result from here and the Boolean result from here. And both of them, like it will be result one and result two. If true, so it's a valid token, so we can continue and move on within the filter chain. Otherwise we need, we have an, an invalid token and we need to send an authorize or 403 back to the user. So what we implemented so far within our JWT security video or implementation or mini project, if we may call it like that. So it was only uh, working around one entity, which is the user. All right. So our user looks like this. So we have the user within the primary key ID, first name, last name, email, password, and we have a role. Now we need to extend this class diagram and we need also to add uh, a new table or to create a new table where we will be storing all our tokens for the user. All right. So, and for this, we, we will be creating this table right here. So it's, we will call it token and it will contain an ID of course, and then a string token, which is unique. And then we have a token type in case we want to implement different token type, but for now it will be by default a beer token. And then we will be having two Boolean uh, flags. The first one is expired and the second one is revoked. And we need to update these flags once the user performs a logout or send a logout uh, request to, to our backend. Also, let's check the relation between the user and the token. So here you see that we have one too many. It's not zero too many, but it's one too many. So having a user in our system means that he has at least one token. Because if you remember, our registration mechanism will automatically create the user and send back a JWT token. So we need also to store that JWT token. So this is, or these are the modifications that we need to uh, implement or we need to do on our backend system in order to realize this mechanism. Now let's go back to our IntelliJ and start implementing this token part. So first of all, we will start by creating a new entity. So just to remind you, this is our project and the one we implemented with the latest video, the JWT security video. So if you didn't watch this yet, go ahead and watch that video and then you can come back and implement this. All right. So I'm going to collapse everything. And here in the main package, I will right click and then create a class and I will create it within a package. I will call it token and then I will call my class also token. All right. So yeah, it's in this package and here. So let's take the same annotation like to make it faster. I will just go here to the user and copy these annotations. The one that we need data builder, no arcs constructor, all arcs constructor, and of course the entity annotation. I'm going to paste them here. So now we need to provide our ID. So it's going to be integer 
and now we need to use the id annotation and also generated value okay so now we have the id and as we mentioned before we will be having a, a private and then string token so it's the token itself and then we will be having a private token type so this is an enum we'll be creating and let's call it token type we can also add this annotation enumerated and here let's use the enum type string then we can create or we can go ahead and create our token type so here it proposes already to create uh, an enum token type so i will do it and i will create it within the same package all right so here i will just create my first or for, for this case i only have this uh, beer token or beer type then i will add two flags so the first one it's boolean expired and the second one it's also a boolean revoked so in case you want to revoke manually or for example if you want to implement some mechanism when you restart your application or you start your server you want to revoke all the tokens so i'm creating or i'm preparing the flags for you and here we have also revoked so this is um, our token entity now let's add some mapping to it so we said that each entity belongs to one uh, each token entity or like each token belongs to one user so we have here an object user and then user and here we would we know that many tokens can go or can belong to the same user so we have a many to one and now we can add the join colon and then we can give it a name so here i will call it user underscore id now from the other side from the user side we need also to associate this tokens to that user so after the role right here i will create a private list of token and they'll call them tokens so here i need to import my class which is alibo security token and then it's the annotation or the relation one to many and now we need of course the mapped by so it's mapped by user so here we have everything or we have our uh, database set up and up to date if you run your application now you should see two tables one for the user and the second one which is the new one the repository uh, not the repository but the token table now we need to create of course the repository for this token because we will need it to access our database and get the tokens from there so here in the same place i will create a new new class and it's going to be an interface and then we call it token repository so this one of course it should extend the jpa repository and here we need of course let me make this full screen for you so it's of type token and then integer our id all right so now after that i would need two methods i would need to create two methods the first one is the method that we that will allow us or help us to get all the valid tokens for specific user so we pass the user id and based on that or using that we can get all the tokens that belong to to this user and the second one is just finding a token by the token itself so all i need is just to pass the token string which is unique and then i would need to get the token from the database so the first one i will call it list of token and then i will call it find all valid tokens by user and here i need to pass the integer user id or id 
All right. So here, this is the user ID. And for that, I will use the query annotation to create my, my query. Okay, so it will be select T from token T. And then I will inner join it or like I will create a join user U and then I need to add my condition like what is the join condition on uh, here I have t dot user dot uh, ID not email equals u dot ID or the user dot ID so this is the, the query and now I need to add the condition that the token or that tokens belong to that selected user so now I will add my work clause and where u dot id equals user id the one I have uh, as a parameter right here and now I will I want all the valid tokens so valid tokens means that expired false and revoked false so so this is or this means that this token or those tokens are valid and now I will do t dot expired equals false or t dot revoked equals false so in this case i have a query that will allow me or that will help me get all the queries or all the tokens from the token table which are not yet uh, expired or revoked so which are valid so this is the query for it maybe let me format it a bit now we will create the second the second method. So the second method is quite easy. So it's gonna be an optional. So it's not find by ID, but it's find by token. All right, and here I need to pass string token. So now I have my two methods that I will need later on in order to implement my logout mechanism. And now as a next step, we need to save or persist any generated token by our system. So to do that, just to remind you that all the generation happens on this level. So on the authentication, we have our authentication service, which get co gets called by the authentication controller. And in here we have the two methods. The first one that creates or register a new user and the second one that authenticates a user. So let's go ahead and implement this. So within the register method, here after generating the token and saving the user, what we need to do, we need to create or to persist that generated token into our database. All right, so to do that, I will create a var token equals token dot builder and then build and for this I have first of all the user so I need to set the user so now I need to save this one the saved user or the persisted user I need to save it into a variable all right so then this one is gonna be saved user and then the token here so I have the token which is this JWT generated token so it's JWT token and then I need to set the, the token type which as we mentioned um, it's a token type beer token and then after that we have the two flags expired and revoked when we create them we need to set them to false because when we generate a token it's not revoked and it's not expired yes yet so revoked false and then expired also false. So here we have our token and then we need to persist the token to the token table. So to do that, of course, we need to inject our token repository. So after this user repository, I will have a private final token repository and I will call it token repository. And now going back here, so now all I need to do is token 
repository dot save my token. All right. So this is on the register level. All right. Now we need to implement this also on the authentication level. When the, the user gets authenticated and everything is all right, and we are about to return the generated JWT token, we need also to store that. So now we see that creating the token will be the same code as here. So let's extract this block of code to a method. So you can select the code and then you can do right click on here and then you have introduce uh, or extract to a method, all right? Uh, or you can use the shortcut if you are uh, if you are used to shortcuts. Let's call our method save user token. And it takes the user and the JWT token. All right, so let me just refactor it to avoid or just rename it for this typo. And I will just rename this one and call it user and this one it can stay as JWT token. All right, so here we have our refactoring. So we have the save token. And now within the authenticate method, after we authenticate the user, we get everything and we generate the token. We need also to save user token. And I will pass the user and the JWT token also as parameter. And before moving forward with the implementation and writing a lot of code, let's first start our application and let me show you the changes that we have so far. So I will start the application right here. And then first of all, let's go ahead and check our database and see what we have with the as tables. So this is my database. I just refreshed it. And this is my JWT security. And here I see that I have two tables and I have the user and the token. All right. So from the database level, everything is fine. Now I will just clear everything and open my postman and I will just invoke or register a new user. So let's open postman right here. So here I have the query already ready. This is the one we used the last time too. So it's not uh, nothing fancy or new. So here we have the register endpoint and we have our body right here. So all I need to do is to click send. So what I'm expecting here is this token. So it's okay. I have the token. Now I, I want to go and check the database. And what I'm expecting is to have this token already registered. So I'm going to open this. And first of all, let's check the user. So here we have our user just getting created and we have the email, password and so on and so forth. Now let's go and check the token. So for the token right here, we see that we have this token, it's expired false and not revoked. And the token is this one. And we also we have the token type and this token is associated to that user. Now what I will do, I will also go and try the same method, but I will try to authenticate the user instead of registering the user, I will just authenticate him many times. All right, so I will send the first time. So I have a new token, I'm going to send another time, I have also another token and the four, four times. Now I will go back to the database and refresh this table. So we see that we have many tokens assigned to the same user. But there is one thing which is not good, that we have multiple, multiple use, usable uh, tokens. So as you can see, all of them are not expired and not revoked. But what what I expect is for one specific user for the user ID, number one, I would like or I need to have maximum one available or one valid token and the rest of them they need to be expired and revoked at the same time. All right, so what we implemented so far is fine. Now let's just go and revoke all the existing or all the other valid tokens of a specific user. And to demonstrate that, let's stop our application and first let's implement this and then we can continue. 
Now I want to implement the method that will allow or that will revoke all the existing tokens for a specific user. First, let me move this method to the bottom. And now I will create another method, private void, and I will call it revoke all user tokens. And this one, it will take a user as a parameter. So the user as a parameter here, I need it just to fetch all the tokens and all the available and valid tokens for a specific user in the database. All right, so here I have um, valid tokens. I'll create valuable, call it valid tokens, equals token repository dot find all valid tokens by user. And now I need to pass the user dot get ID. Um, let me call this one valid user tokens, just to be consistent. So here, if I will just make uh, a check if valid user tokens point dot is empty. So if it's empty, I will just return and I don't need to execute anything. All right, so we call this an early return in order not to execute the rest of the of the method. Otherwise, what I what I need to do, I will I need to loop over this valid user tokens dot for each. And here let's say T for token and then I want just to update or to uh, to modify the var the values. Okay, so here set expired true. And also I want T dot revoked true. All right, once I update uh, all the tokens and revoke them, what I need to do is token repository dot save all. I want to save all the valid tokens. And that's it. Okay. So now, before saving the user token, now we are back to this authenticate method. And before saving the user token, we need to revoke all of them. And you may ask why before doing that, because if you save the token and then call for revoking the tokens, even that new token will be, um, will be also revoked. So let's call, let's call our method here. And now we have our user as parameter. All right, now let's, let's test these changes. I restarted the application and now let's go back and open our postman and let's try this again. So first of all, let me duplicate this uh, to have one endpoint for authentication and the other one for register. Let me register user and now I will click on send. So here I have my token. And if I go back to my IntelliJ and open my database, I will see that I have the token already saved for that user. Let me make this full screen. So we have the token saved for that user or for the user number one we just created. And now if I go back and do authentication, if I authenticate, I will get a new token but if I go back to the database and refresh this table, you will see that this old one is expired and revoked and the new one, which is just got generated is still available. If I do authenticate again and again and again and again, and now I go back to the database, I will find only one token valid, which is the last one. So now we have almost everything set up and ready to use, but we still have one issue, which is if I pass a, a non-valid token, a non-valid for our system, for our database, which is uh, expired true and revoked true. But if this token is still valid, the, the request will pass through my application or through my backend and it will return a response. And why is that? Because on the JWT level, or the JWT authentication filter level, we did not include this logic yet. So we only, here let me remind you what I'm talking about. I can close this class right here. And if I open my config, and if you go to the JWT authentication filter, 
and I'm gonna make this one full screen. So you will see right here that we are only relying on the JWT service to valid the token. But what I need to do is I need to go to the database, fetch the token and then check if the token is valid or not. All right, so let's, let's implement this. But before implementing this, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you in action what I'm talking about. So here I will use the method, this one. Let me just put it next to, to the other. So first of all, I will create a user. So this is my user. And if I open back my table and my database in here, if I open this token table, you see that we have this valid token. All right. So I'm going to copy this one and I will try to access my demo controller endpoint. So I need to update the token right here. So I will paste the new one and click on send. So you, as you can see here, we have the response from the backend, hello from secured endpoint. Okay, now if I go back here and generate a new token, so now I have a new token, but my request still using the old one. And the old one, if we go to the database and check, the old one is revoked and, and expired. And for that, we need also to add a double check and make sure that that token is no longer valid and that token is no longer usable to access my backend. So here, as you can see, it's revoked and expired. And if I go back to my postman and I'm using that old token and I click on send, I still can access the backend, which should be totally forbidden. So let's implement this. I'm going to close this one, make, make it full screen. Now I can stop the backend. So now on the JWT authentication filter class, first of all, I need to inject a simple, like I want to inject my um, token repository. Let's call it token repository. And then uh, let's make this one final. And then within this token repository, I want to access and use the method that we created before that. So here at this level, after checking that we don't have that we have the user mail and the user is not authenticated. And here we, we are fetching or we're fetching the user details from the database using the user details service. And at this line right here, we are checking if the token is valid or not. So at this level, we need to double check that also the token is valid on the database side. So I will create a variable. I will call it also is token valid. All right. So this is token valid equals my token repository dot find by token. Here I have my token, which is the JWT. And I will fetch or try to fetch um, the token from my database. And for example, if I use a token that does not exist, the system will not allow this. All right. And then after finding the token by token, all I need to do is I need to map. So for the mapping, so I'm going to call it T and I want to return T dot expired. Actually, I want it not to be expired and not to be revoked and not T dot is revoked. And then or else if I don't have anything else, I want to remove always for, uh, not remove. Sorry. I want to return always false. So uh, this method, let me explain it to you. So we are finding or we are trying to find the token by its token, by the generated token. And then what, I, what I'm doing right here is I'm mapping this result to a Boolean because I need a Boolean right here to check if the token is valid or not. So for this, I'm just mapping it to, it should not be expired and also it should not be revoked. Otherwise, if my result or, or if I can't find a token by the token that I have or by this JWT token string, I will be returning false anyway. All right. So now all I need to do is here. So first of all, I check that my token is not expired, belongs to the user and so and all this process that we explained before. 
if true then i need also to check that this token is ready or available on the database all right so also it should be is token valid right here so that's it now we updated our uh, our system let's go ahead and let me show you like um, the changes or let me show you that this mechanism now is more uh, robust and more powerful to validate the tokens all right so i'm gonna restart the application and test so the application is up and running let me open my token table which should be empty right now and i will use my postman and first of all i will register a new user so I get this new token and I'm going to copy it and ensure you or show you that this token is valid to access the backend. So this is an old one. All right. I will not update it yet. If I click send. So I'm getting 403 because this one is old. And if I remove and use the new token and I click send. So I'm getting a response from my endpoint, which is hello from secured endpoint. Now. I will keep the same token within this get method and I will go back to my authenticate uh, method or authenticate endpoint and I will try to authenticate again the same user so I will get a new token for that user. So I'm clicking on send. So now I have my new token and also if I show you on the database level, I only have one valid token which is this one. Okay. But the old one that we used for to, uh, to fetch or to access this get endpoint now will be invalid and we should not be able to access or to have this response message. All right, let's click on send. And now, as you can see, we have this 403 forbidden. So it means our mechanism is working okay. Everything is working fine. And now we are relying on the token itself. And also we are relying on the database to check that that token is already in, in our database and it's not expired and not revoked. Okay. So now let's move on and really check the best part of this. Uh, it's not over yet. Don't go away because now the best part will start. So now I just want to talk, you, talk to you as uh, in full screen. So you can see, uh, see me all. And now I want to tell you how we need or how we are going to implement this logout. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, that Spring already provides us with a logout handler and also a logout success handler. So we have two methods or two, um, let's say two beans or two implementations that will help us to implement our logout mechanism. All right. So what we did so far is just preparing everything in order to implement this logout endpoint. All right. So now let's move on and start implementing this. So now, first of all, or the first thing that we need to do, we need to add some configuration to our security configuration in order to tell Spring that we have now or we want to implement a logout mechanism or a logout functionality. So here, if you let me make this full screen again. So if you go to this security filter chain bin, when where we defined everything. So all we need to do is after this, uh, after adding this filter or the JWT filter, I want to do something or I want to give more or extra configuration in order to tell Spring that now I'm working or I want to do a logout. So here, if I do dot logout and then I do add logout handler. So for this logout handler, for the moment, I will put it as null and I will tell you what is this logout handler. So it should be an object of type logout handler and it should not or it should not be null. All right. And then I will add also I will add also a logout success handler. And for this logout success handler, it's just um, a Lambda expression. 
so let me use the auto completion right here and this is what will happen or what you want to do once the logout success or like once you have a logout success so for our case right here all, I, all we want to do is to clear our security context so if the user is logged out we need to clear our security context in order the user cannot access again with this expired token he will not be able to access again our api so um, i will use security context holder dot clear context and that's it so let me maybe make this in a new line so you can see it and this is our logout success handler now let me go back to this logout handler or add logout handler as I, as I mentioned this logout handler it will use or it's it's waiting for a logout handler object and to do that this is where we need or where we want to implement all the logout mechanism all right but before that here we mentioned that we that we have the logout handler we have the logout success handler but we did not specify the logout url yet for the logout spring uses a default url which is slash logout but if you want to have your own logout uh, url you can just add it you can just override it in our case we don't need to implement an endpoint or uh, to add a new method in any controller all we need to do is here just to tell spring that our logout url is the following all right so for this i will be following the same nomination or the same naming that we used for our application so it will be slash api slash v1 slash auth slash logout all right so now if we use so we have our auth controller which contains the register the authentication also the authenticate method now i want to add a logout but i will add just the url and i will tell spring every time you get a request for this specific url api v1 auth logout just implement this logout handler or execute this logout handler and do not delegate it to any of our controllers so here since we said that this add logout handler is expecting an object of of type logout handler let's go and create this logout handler in our config package i will create a new class and i will call it logout service in here and this logout service should implement the logout handler all right so this logout handler is an interface let me implement the methods and make, let me make this full screen and of course i will align these variables for you so you can read it correctly all right so we have this logout handler and this logout handler has already a method called logout and it passes as parameter the request the response and also the authentication in case you want or you need to get the user information or the user data beforehand now i need to make this service and of course i will need the required args constructor from lombok in order if i need to inject something okay so now once we created this logout server service let's map it or let's bind it to this logout handler in our security configuration so scroll to the top and here I will create a private final logout handler and I will call it just logout handler and spring automatically will find that we have a logout handler implementation and it will use it so going back here and in here just use my logout handler so after binding the logout handler service or, uh, or our logout service let's go to this logout method and let's implement it so let me explain you a bit how it works so as you can see here in our authentication filter what we do first is is we extract the jwt fro from our authorization header all right so we have the header and we try to extract the jwt and based on that we check if the if we have the user and so on and so forth now it's going to be something similar to that so as you can see here i will just copy this 
lines of code and I will explain you here what, what I need to do. So this logout method, as I mentioned, it has or it passes as parameters, the request response and the authentication. And for us or for our case, we want to invalidate the token. So we need to extract or to get the token from the request right here. And then we need to fetch this request in the database and invalidate it. And then the JWT authentication filter will do the job since we updated our mechanism or our implementation there. So first of all, I'm going to paste the code right here and I'm going to perform some cleanup. I don't need the user email. And now also I don't have the filter chain. So here my only test right here, if I don't have an authorization header and this header is not a bearer token, so I don't need to implement anything or I don't need to do anything at all. All right. So then I would need to inject my token repository. And let's make it final, of course. And now what I need to do, I will create var and I will call it stored token equals my token repository dot find by token. And my token is the JWT token variable that I have right here, or else I will just return null. All right. So just to make it as easy as possible. So once I have my stored token, I will perform a small check. If my stored token is not null, this means if my token or the token that I got in the header is valid and in my database, of course. So I just need to invalidate it. All right. So then what I need to do stored token dot set expired to true and then stored token dot set revoked also to true. All right. And then what I need to do, just call my token repository dot save this stored token. And that's it. And like this, I have almost my uh, lookout mechanism set. Now let's move on and see what comes next. Now I will restart my application and let's show, let me show you the changes that we, that we did and what are the impacts and how this logout works. So my application is running. I'm going to clean the console and open again my postman right here. So the first thing that I need to do is of course to register a user. And then I will try to access some endpoint. So I will copy the token from here and then I will post paste it here. So this token now will allow me to access the backend because uh, it's valid, not revoked and so and so forth. Now, what I want to do is I want to perform a logout. And as, as you, uh, as you remember, the logout URL is slash API slash V1 slash logout. Now, if I click on send, I have, first of all, I have a 200, but first let me check my database and see if my token is already revoked or not. So now this token is not revoked. And the reason why is here within this logout uh, URL, I'm not passing the correct one, of course. Like I was just checking if you are following or uh, correctly or not. So now I'm just uh, pasting the new token and I will click on send. And you see that we have 200 right here. And again, if I go back to my database update, you see that the token is expired and also revoked at the same time. Now, if I go back to this get method and I click send, I should or I expect uh, a 403. And this is what we get right here. We have our 403 unless I do a log uh, an authenticate again to generate a new token and I can use this token to access my backend again. So let's give it a final try and send. So here we have the, the endpoint or we have the response from our endpoint. I will log out the user and I will click on send again. Now, if I try to access this, so it's again forbidden. 
Now, I will final check on the database level. So we have two tokens and both of them are expired and revoked. Again, thank you for watching and thank you for staying um, at this level. I really hope that the video was clear for you and you learned something new from me. If you like this video and if you like my content and if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, just go ahead and click the subscribe button and also take just one second. It's only one second and hit the thumbs up button. Give me some motivation so I can continue on producing and creating content like this for you guys. I was so happy having you here and see you in the next video.